What is up, family? It's your boy, D, coming right back at you with another one. Right now, what I want to address are eight orders, eight order band pass. What are the significance of them? Are they better than the fourth order? Are they more efficient than the sixth order? How difficult are they to build? How can I get my hands on one? All right, jump right off into this thing, and we're going to start explaining exactly what an eighth order band pass is. As you can see on the uh, screen here, I have an enclosure with three different ports. That's right, three different ports. If you were to take a good look, you will see that you have a port here. This port, of course, is tuned to 50 hertz. This port over here, which is tuned to 30 hertz. And then you have a port here, which is tuned to 70 hertz. Okay, so what is this? Why does this look so weird? And what is the purpose of an 8-order bandpass? So the purpose of an 8-order bandpass, and to all my followers, my guys that have been looking at my previous videos, who have liked, who have subscribed, who have clicked the notification bell. If this looks familiar to you, it should because it's a it's a direct, um, I guess you can say a direct morph of the sixth order band pass that I did previous. And I also have, for example, a fourth order band pass, which was which we're going to use for example later. But for right now, know that the schematics for the eight order band pass did come from the schematics from the six order band pass. But I must warn that the measurements that you see here in the graph are not accurate. These are not up to spec. These are not these have not been tested. These are simply here for demonstration purposes only. All right, let me move on with the uh, with the video. So, eight order band pass. What makes it an eight order band pass? Why is it called an eight order band pass? What are the numbers behind it? How can I build one for myself? Where is your spec sheet? Okay, so this is the thing. In order to build an eight order band pass, you have to kind of know what's going on with the band pass in general. I'm not going to complicate this by throwing a whole bunch of formulas at you. I'm not going to complicate this by giving you weird measurements. And I'm not going to talk about box rise and all those other things. Right now, what you need to know is this. This 70 hertz port right here. This chamber right here with this port that is tuned to 70 hertz is the most important thing that you need to worry about right now. This port right here, this green port. All right. So what I want you to do is ask yourself a question. Whenever you build in a band pass, you need to ask yourself the same exact question if you want to make this as simple as possible. OK, this is for my beginners out there. Now, all my more experienced guys probably ain't going to like what I'm about to say. Well, I'm not going to say they're not, they're not going to like it. They may respect it for simplicity purposes, but from a more experience viewpoint they probably not going to like what i've got to say next but i got to keep it simple that's that's for my guys who are liking the fact that i am keeping it simple so that's what i'm about to do this port is at 70 hertz if you really want to know the purpose the general overall purpose of an eight order band pass is to take a speaker or a woofer or a driver those terms i will use interchangeably during this demonstration there is the purpose of an eight order or sixth order or fourth order is to take a a driver in which may not be able to handle certain frequencies and put it in an enclosure in which it will emulate a driver of better quality and it would emulate the power and it, and it would deliver the uh, the recommended or whatever um power rating or or frequency response rating that you would desire within a certain frequency band now what do i mean by that so let's just say for instance if this driver right here was only rated at 50 hertz let's just say that let's keep that in mind if this driver was rated only at 50 hertz that is that is what the, the manufacturer recommend anything that you try to tune it below that or 
its resonance frequency out of the box. It's not 30 hertz. It is not 20 hertz. It is not 40 hertz. It's 50 hertz. So what does that mean? That means that if you are expecting this driver, this woofer right here to perform like a 30 hertz driver, then you're in trouble. Because it's not going to perform like a 30 hertz driver because it's only 50 hertz. Now, also keep this in mind. Is it difficult for a 50 hertz driver to perform at 70 hertz? Of course it isn't. Because it's not the high sub frequencies that you have to worry about. It's the lower sub frequencies that you have to worry about. So, in order for a driver, a woofer, to obtain or to achieve a 30 hertz resonant frequency, it needs to be able to withstand this frequency with a given amount of power without destroying itself. In order to do that without it destroying itself, it needs to be made of the best stuff or near the best stuff. When I say stuff, I mean material. I'm talking about from the dust cap to the surround to the cone, to the magnet, the material that the basket is made out of, the material that the voice cores are made out of, all these things need to be made out of good material. That is why you have your high-end stuff, your high-end drivers, your high-end woofers are made out of the high-quality stuff. That's why they're so expensive. If you're wondering, that's why they are so expensive. That's why some of these drivers can cost you upwards of $1,000 or more because they are made out of good stuff. And that's why there's some of their resonant frequencies are all the way down. All They can get as low as 14 hertz, 15 hertz I've seen in some applications. Even though you can't hear that, but you can feel it. And in home theater system, that is optimal. You understand what I'm saying? So the lower the frequency, the more typically the more abuse this thing can take. It's made out of good stuff. So you're going to have to pay for that. That's why they're so expensive. So what would we do, the budget guys? How could we obtain those same numbers, that same experience with the $50 woofer, with the $100 woofer, with a 200 budget woofer? How could we obtain the same experience? We have to build ourselves a band pass. Enclosure. This is what you're going to have to build. Why? Because you can take this, this woofer that's rated at 50 hertz, that's rated at 45 hertz, and you can put it in an enclosure that has it outputting at 30 hertz. That's very, very important. That is very, very important. As a matter of fact, let's go all the way down here. Let's go down here to a fourth order band pass. So what does a fourth order band pass do? A fourth order band pass take advantage of the flat frequency response of a sealed enclosure. Okay, this is your quality right here. It hit the lows and it hit the mids and it hit the, the high sub frequencies. You understand? It's not much of a big, it's not that big of a difference in between response of a sealed enclosure when you're talking about its sub frequencies so it's more flat than what you would get out of a ported section so what are you doing here so what you're doing is you are turning this 50 hertz just for reference we're going to make this a 50 hertz driver for the entire rest of the demo so what you're doing is you're taking this 50 hertz driver right and you're putting in a seal you're taking advantage of this capabilities here Risk resonance frequency normally fresh out of the box 50 hertz. That's what it can do. It can it go lower than that? Yeah, can it go lower than that? Sustain itself without destroying itself? No, it cannot because it's not a woofer designed to do that. But everyone knows or should know in a sealed enclosure, you can throw more power at a woofer without it destroying itself, right? And you can hit the lows over here without it destroying itself. So what you're doing here is you throw, if you throw a 35 hertz test tone at this woofer inside of this fourth order band pass, it will, simple, it will simply be as though you have a 30 hertz woofer or 35 hertz woofer with a 50 hertz port. So would a 30 hertz woofer 
perform great in a 50 in a 50 hertz enclosure of course it would why because it's not the high frequencies it's not the high sub frequencies that a cheap woofer struggles to achieve to achieve it's the lower end stuff so when you make this fourth order bandpass you you essentially what you're doing is you're creating an environment where this is now a 30 hertz sub it's a 30 hertz sub and it will do 30 hertz. So let's move on to a sixth order. So what is the sixth order doing? It's doing exactly the same thing. You're taking a subwoofer that's particularly not even rated for 30 hertz and you're putting it in an enclosure that is rated for 30. I mean, that, that is tuned to 30 hertz. And it has a second portion over here, a second chamber that can be tuned to something completely different. In this in this case, an example, this is 50 hertz. Of course, I said we're going to keep this at 50 hertz. So just imagine if this was like 60 or 70 hertz. So would a 50 hertz woofer perform well in a 60 hertz chamber? Of course it would, because this is what it is. Uh, designed to do this is what this port calls for so it this port would catch all of the 60 and 70 hertz over here while this chamber over here would handle anything low end throwing at it and why is that important the reason why this is important and I know some of you guys are thinking some of you guys are thinking okay th okay D you said that this 30 hertz, if it tried to obtain a 30 hertz, it would destroy itself because it's not made out of the best material. But keep in mind, people, that when it obtained this frequency right here, when it tries to do this frequency, the fact that it is here inside of this chamber tuned to 30 hertz, it will be almost at a standstill. The less, the more, uh, this is another, this is another takeaway. The closer that a driver is to the resonant tuned frequency of, a, of the chamber that is inside of, the less cone movement that you have. So let's keep this, let's keep this, let's keep this, uh, let's, 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 let's talk about that again. The more close that, the, the, the closer that a driver, a woofer, a speaker is to the resonant frequency of the chamber that it is in, 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 that it is in, encased in, the less cone movement that you have in a vented enclosure. The less cone movement that you have. Okay? So that's why it would not destroy itself inside of here if this was a 50 hertz uh, driver inside of this 30 hertz enclosure. So let's move on to the 8th the eighth order bandpass. The reason why the 8th order is even more, is even more beautiful because now... What you have here is this, these two ports are going to work in conjunction with this 70 hertz port. So keep in mind, it is not the higher sub frequencies in which a wolf will struggle to obtain. It is the lower frequency. So, okay, now ask yourself this question. Remember that question. Ask yourself this question. Would a 50 hertz woofer speaker driver perform well in a 70 hertz enclosure of course it will because it's not the higher sub frequencies that it struggles to obtain it is the lower sub frequencies in which it struggles to attain and guess what we also have a 30 hertz port here so will a 30 hertz driver perform well in a 70 hertz enclosure of course it will why because it is not the higher sub frequencies in which it, it struggles to obtain, it is the lower sub frequencies in which it, would tain, it, it struggles to obtain. So this would do fine from 30 all the way to 70 in theory. And that, people, is pretty much how you know my explanation of an eighth order and how it trumps both the sixth and the fourth order bandpass. If you guys have any comments or any questions that you feel as though I did not specify things as accurately as I could, please leave a comment in the sections below and I will make sure to get back to you at my earliest convenience. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a thumb up if you guys felt like you got something out of this. And until next time, it's your boy D and I'm out.